Today, I'll be showing you defensive tips and tricks for 5v5 Pro-Am. These will include things like defensive rotations in the half court and press defenses. Also, all of today's footage comes from I'm Blitzen. He's an upcoming center in the Pro-Am community, and he's only 16 years old competing against and with some of the best comp players. So be sure to keep an eye out for him and to drop a follow on his Twitter and Twitch. So to first start off, I want to show you guys how most defenses will be set up. As you can see right here, lockdown, which is usually the small forward, will be guarded guarding the ball, the shooting guard will be guarding the wing, the point guard will be guarding the corner, and your center will be guarding the corner, and your power forward will be the back end of the screen, he'll be guarding the screener. So now the first rotation I'll be showing you guys is a triangle rotation, and this is basically how it'll look when you do it, it should look something like this, and basically what you're doing here is you want your lockdown to be playing the middle of the court and you want your power forward to be playing the wing side of the screen when the triangle is called. And then to complete the triangle rotation, the center that's in the corner should be dropping over to the slip right here so that you completely stop the slip from happening. So in this footage, I'm gonna show you a triangle for video purposes. Let's just pretend the person right here on ball is the power forward. This person down here is the lock and in the corner is the center. So as you can see right here, the triangle is going to get called. And as you can see, the powerful would drop over here. The lock would play the middle of the floor and the center would drop to the slip right here. So you take away the three point line and you still take away the slip when you call this. Now for the reverse, it's literally the same exact motion. It's the same thing as a triangle. The only difference though is on a reverse, your power forward will play the middle and your small forward, which is the lock, will play the wing side. So basically, once the slip happens, the center will be picking up, your lockdown will be dropping to the corner, and your power forward will be playing up on the ball handler. What? On the ball handler. Coming up. Watch J-Bucks. Yeah, coming up. So if we look at this possession right here, the lock is on ball, the center's in the corner, and the power forward is guarding the screener. As you can see right here, they call the reverse. The lock is dropping down to the corner, the power forward stepping up, and the center's going to the slip. And that's exactly what it should look like. So when I first started noticing Pro-Am players call out a reverse, I used to be confused because I'm like, if it's the same thing as a triangle, why are they calling it a reverse instead of just a triangle and i realized that the reason why they call one reverse and one triangle is because this is the way of the lock communicating to the power forward which side they're getting so for example with this possession right here say there was no such thing as a reverse and people only called triangle since the on ball defender is like playing the the point guard straight up if somebody calls out a triangle the back end doesn't know which side to guard they don't know which side of the screen to get because one the screen's not even set yet so right here he would have to decide whether he's going left or right and then the power forward would have to would have to adjust to that but since they say triangle and reverse you already know which side you have to get within the rotation and another thing you'll notice is that any alternate defensive rotation the lock or on ball defender is always rotating away from the ball so you'll notice in reverse the lock is rotating towards the corner and the power forward is stepping up as you can see right here so keep that in mind especially when i go through the other defensive rotations the alternate rotation always moves the lock away from the ball so now i'll be showing you a stack rotation and basically to start it off your center must be in the opposite corner from the ball in order to run a stack. If you notice with triangle, you can only run triangle when your center is on the same side as the ball. So now for the stack defense, you want your lockdown to be playing the wing side of the court and you want your power forward to be playing the middle of the floor. So once you know the point guard uses the screen and then the center starts to slip, this is where your center will be dropping to the slip your shooting guard or whoever's on the hash will drop to the corner and the power forward will be moving over to the hash. Three seconds. So, so, so. Jump at this nigga, bro. Come on. So in this possession right here, you'll see that 
This is their lock, but the shooting guard gets switched onto the point guard. And right here, they're going to call a stack. So you see the shooting guards playing the left side of the screen and the power forwards trying to get over to the middle of the court. And as soon as the slip happens, Blitzen drops to the to the slip, the lock. Since he's guarding the hash, he'll be moving over to the corner and then the power forward slides over to the hash. So now like that, the shooting guard's still able to guard the ball handler and the center's in perfect position to either get a box out or to block a shot right here. And as you can see, they get a stop. Also, a big thing that you'll also notice, a lot of teams run stack and reverse stack towards the end of the possession. You can see there's seven seconds left. Now, the reason why they do that is because if you notice, it's kind of like you're playing size on the screen for a second. So you could stop a three-point shot from getting up as you can see, he has takeover, so it would be smart to run a stack. But usually, like in 3v3, if two people step up and you shoot a shot, it's a free board for the center. But now, since the stack has the corner dropping over to the slip, you're easily able to get a box out if the point guard does shoot a shot. So now I'll be telling you how to do a reverse stack. Now, the difference with the reverse stack is that instead, instead of the lock playing the wing side of the floor, He'll be playing the middle now and the power forward will be playing the left side and again you do the same exact thing once you know the point guard uses the screen and the slip happens the center will be picking up at the corner the shooting guard will be dropping to the corner and the lock will be rotating away from the ball to the shooting guard again with the alternate defensive rotations the lockdown or the on ball defenders always rotating away from the ball handler take him if he goes corner yep Shit. nothing easy in the paint don't overcompensate side so right here you can see they run a bucks to try and get a switch so now the shooting guard is on the ball handler right now i don't remember if, the, if this was their point guard or shooting guard but you can see he's guarding him and right here they call a reverse stack so this is why you'll see their shooting guard reg go over the screen because he's trying to get to the middle of the court well he went under the screen but he's trying to get to the middle of the court so once the the other team's point guard uses the screen the slip happens blitz and drops to the slip the lock was guarding the hash so he's gonna go to the corner and the shooting guards trying to get to the hash and as you can see right here is like five seconds it was probably only like seven seconds left when they called it there was seven seconds left on the clock so a lot of teams like to call the stack so that they can secure an easy box out and also stop a three-pointer from being put up by the ball handler and as you can see they hit the shot but if they would have missed it would have been a free board for blitzing so now the next thing that i want to talk about is shrinking the floor for anybody that's not familiar with what shrinking the floor is i'll explain that to you guys right now so basically shrinking the floor is like a way of putting pressure on the point guard to like make a decision like to make the game a little more harder for them so when people call out to shrink the floor basically the help defenders instead of playing their man straight up they're like gonna kind of gap it they're gonna play two people so let's just say for example the point guard goes towards the middle of the court the, sh the lock will be guarding him and the shooting guard will kind of play like half and half so the point guard has to think oh do i throw the ball to the to my shooting guard so that i so that he could get an open shot or are they just trying to bait me into throwing a pass and i really have like a middle peak right here so when teams call out to shrink the floor too the center or whoever's in the corner might lift up as well so that even if he throws the pass over here it's gonna be kind of hard to tell if it's open or not because the center is kind of playing too so it's almost like you don't know whether he's guarding the power forward right here or he's getting ready to like jump at um either a pass or a shot over here too so it kind of forces the point guard to like play the guessing game with the other team and to make the right decision you know instead of the other team playing him straight up and him knowing oh if i beat the lockdown i'm gonna have a wide open shot right here instead of things being like that if he does beat the lockdown he now has to play the guessing game of oh is their shooting guard gonna step at me or is he waiting for me to throw a pass so that he can just press square and get a steal shrink it shrink it shrink it watch midi 
Leak, leak, leak. Oh, no. So right here, shrinking the floor ends up making him go towards the wing. And if Bear steps right here just a little bit, the other point guard might have not even got a shot up because it probably would have baited him into throwing a pass to the corner or shooting a contested shot. He gets a good look, but he still does end up missing. So again, the advantage to shrinking the floor is that the three point line looks a lot less open, especially since most people play on 2K camera. It's kind of hard to see like how much space is in between a defender and the corner. So uh, everything's gonna look crowded up here by the top of the key and the wings, but down here by the corner, it's a lot harder to see everything. I got you, Reg. I got you, Reg. Shrink that if he comes me. Good stuff. They sped up. Come on. Oh my God. Another reason why shrinking the floor works is that instead of just letting the other team's point guard like score one-on-one -on -one and in the PNR, a lot of good guards, they're gonna know how to score on that every time. Once they beat the first two defenders, everything kind of becomes easy to them. So once you shrink the floor, it kind of makes them play the guessing game and they have to like be able to read you. So say for example, right here, you see how Reg is like in between Book and the shooting guard. Now, right here, he has to decide, oh, is he gonna try and contest me or is he just baiting me to throw a pass and then he'll steal the ball? So shrinking the floor kind of forces the other guard to start making more decisions rather than just scoring or making a simple pass to the open man. So now the next defense I'll be showing you is called the three guard. And basically what you'll have here is you'll have the lock and your shooting guard pressing the ball trying to trap the ball handler you have your point guard guarding the shooting guard on the wing and you'll have your center in one corner and your power forward in another corner another thing too is that certain parts of this press can be interchangeable so say for example instead of having the shooting guard up here on the trap you can have your shooting guard guarding the shooting guard and the point guard up here it just all depends on your own team and the personal and your preference for that situation and you could also have the power forward in this corner and the center in the other corner. So right here, the shooting guard and the lock will try and trap the bull and then their center will be going up the court. So right here, something that you could do is you could have your point guard try and play the pass here or, pay, or play the skip pass, but it's gonna be a lot harder since it's a point guard and not like a power forward with like better steel and a longer like player model to get those steals let's just say the point guard doesn't play the center and then the center gets down the court and the center starts to slip down here what you'll want to do is you'll have the shooting guard release from the trap and when he releases from the trap the center will be dropping down to the slip and the point guard will be dropping down to the corner and the shooting guard will be getting back to the other shooting guard so the most important thing about this three guard is that it speeds up the point guard and the two things that should never be given up in a three guard is the point guard being aggressive and scoring or a wide open slip because no matter what side the point guard goes to he has to deal with a double team and also on the slip there's always a big man that can drop down to get that slip and get a contest another important thing too about the three guard or any press is that you want to make sure that you're communicating very well with the people that you're rotating with so you need to make sure that your shooting guard is releasing at the right time so that the center can catch the slip the point guard can drop to the corner all of this can happen in a good enough time so that there's not too much opening for the point guard to pass to an open shot. So let's say for example right here, say the center is just sitting here trying to set a screen while the trap's going on. This right here is fine. The shooting guard doesn't have to release yet because the center is not looking to make himself a threat and to drop down to the rim. But as soon as the center starts to slip or you feel like he's gonna slip, it's important that all three people here communicate and that the shooting guard starts to release so that it allows the point guard to rotate and the center to rotate to the slip. So let's say for example, the center starts to slip, but the shooting guard isn't releasing. Now at this point, the center can't drop down because he'll have to leave the corner open. And if the point guard tries to compensate for that, now he has to play two 
and nine times out of ten he's going to be the person with the least defense so he has to try and play two and he's the shortest person on the court so this gives the center and the point guard a lot more time to make a pass to an open three-point shot so it's most important to understand your personnel and just to communicate with each other and understand the team that you're playing and to know whether the shooting guard needs to release at half court or a lot earlier or all the way down here at the three-point line it, it'll all really depend on when the point guard gives the ball up if the point guard is continuously trying to dribble and isn't looking to give the ball up to the shooting guard or the center you could keep trying to double team him until he throws a bad pass and then the point guard could try and get a lane or something like that that's really a tip i have to emphasize that you're communicating and you release from the double team at the right time every player i'm wasting time off the clock that's why you can hit me up i'm up. Do I go down or up? So you'll see right here in this possession, the other team is running a three guard. You'll see right here that they have the one through three playing up here in the backcourt and they have their forward in their center all the way back here. So you'll see they're trying to get a trap right here. He tries to play the lane on the center. So now you'll see that he goes for a trap over here. He tries to go for a blitz. Bear to be slows it down, but pay attention to the slip right here the power forward is going to drop to the slip he's going to release from the trap and go over to the wing and he's going to go over to the corner and you can see right here even though he doesn't go to the corner if he would have done that you would see by within 10 seconds the point guard doesn't have the ball and they still haven't gotten into their offense so that just goes to show you that when you run a three guard you completely take away the slip and you kind of take away the point guard from being aggressive oh yeah, yeah. oh Good day. even in this clip right here you'll see that they didn't purposely run a three guard it's just since the quarter started this is where everybody spawned out i guess so you can see right here all the lock bear the beast and the two guard is up right here you could see bear the beast tries to go for a steal they don't give it to him but you could see right here that it completely takes away the two even though they weren't actually in a three guard you'll see that the slip is not open and you could even see they're able to get a stop on it it just just so happened that the other team's center was able to get an offensive rebound to be able to get it back and get a bucket but you could see if you run a three guard it completely takes away the point guard from like being an offensive threat and it completely takes away a wide open two so now for the last press defense i'll be showing you guys is red i don't have any footage of it but i can show you what you're on the playbook so the difference between three guard and red is that now you'll have your center in one corner your point guard in one corner and the power forward on the shooting guard and the most important thing here too is that you want to try and get the center on the same side as the power forward right here as he's guarding the wing defender now let's just say right here the center inbounds the ball he starts going up the court now the advantage with red is instead of having a guard playing this lane right here you have a power forward that can try and play the center pass and the shooting guard pass and the power forward nine times out of ten has the most or the second most steal rating on the court and he's going to be taller than a guard so now again it'll be the same concept as three guard let's just say the center slips all the way down let's say he just throws it all the way down the court the center has to pick up on this the power forward will drop down here and then the shooting guard will move over to where the other shooting guard is one thing that i almost forgot to mention is that you can interchange between having your center or your power forward in the corner or the wing so basically the best time to have your power forward here i say is like when you really need a steal in like the half court and back court area so that would usually be like towards the end of the fourth quarter with like two three four seconds left and you're down by two or three nine times out of ten you want your power forward here so that if he gets the steal at least he can shoot a three-point shot over here because you're getting the steal in the back court but the best time to have your center at the wing i would say is like in the beginning of the game or in the middle of the game because even if you don't get a steal or anything like that once the full rotation happens like where the point guard gets up the court the center slips 
and then you pass the ball down here now your power forward can drop the center can go to the corner and then your shooting guards over here so now you're back into your regular defense and even if your center were to get a steal over here in the half court or the back court it's like he can still slow it down and give the ball back to the point guard because you're still you're in the midst of the game you're not in a rush to get a score like as soon as you get the steal every time but let me know in the comment section if i should do a video like this for offense explaining how to score on the defenses i showed today if not be sure to check out my video on my 6-6 pg build that can play as a lockdown defender and i'll holla at y'all in the next video